Hey, welcome back to another Touch Center tutorial. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to take any video and then stylize it using Stable Diffusion and convert it into another video. One of the unique things that I set up here is that you can actually keyframe in different parameters from your animation and then get that into your final output. So what I did here is I took a audio reactive shader that I made previously, and then I keyframed in certain parameters. So at a certain point, I swap out the prompts and also the strength. So if you haven't had a chance to check out my previous videos on using the Stable Diffusion plugin for Touch Designer, definitely go check those out. I'll link to those in the description for the video. Another part that's really exciting is that I've set this up so that you actually are using multiple compute render components. And what this allows you to do is asynchronously render multiple frames at the same time. And then once all of those are ready, then it'll add those frames into your video. So this makes the process much, much faster. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video that I created. And for reference, here's a little snippet of the original video. This project file right now is gonna be available in my Patreon, um, but I'm gonna go through and show you how to basically set this up in general, and then I'm gonna build the animation part of this from scratch so that you can follow along. But when you open up the file from Patreon, you should have all this prepped and ready to go. Um, for starters, the first thing that I'm gonna do is just show you how to kind of like swap out your own video and prompts, and then we'll rebuild this part. So let's go ahead and do that. When you're generating a video using Stable Diffusion, it can be a little bit jumpy between frames. And so one thing that I found that was really beneficial was to actually take my original video that I'm about to process through Stable Diffusion and speed it up by two times the speed. Then what you can do is run it through Stable Diffusion, generate all your frames, slow it down by half speed, so it's then the original length, and use frame interpolation. So you can either just blend between frames, but most video editing software will also have something like an optical flow where it'll kind of move some of the pixels around and uh, add some frame interpolation, which is super, super helpful. Let's go ahead and take a look at really quickly just using this network in order to generate your own videos. So this is the compute render component. Make sure you have your API key. And if you haven't generated your own, definitely go ahead and follow my previous tutorials on getting this set up. I have this table right here set up with the different prompts that I'm gonna use throughout the video. In this case, I just had two. So I had kind of like an eclipse and solar system, different clouds and vortexes and things like that. And then later on, I felt like it kind of looked like a pupil or an iris. And so I wanted the imagery to start looking like that a little bit later on. And here you can see I'm referencing the prompts from this table. And this component here is just getting all the references from this first one. So in order to record your own video, what I'd recommend doing is just going to this movie file in, selecting your new video, and going from there. The other thing that I would do is snag the same video and put it in here as well. And this one right here is locked to the timeline. So we'll use this to kind of identify certain parts of your video that you want to add in a specific keyframe. While this video right here, its playback is linked to this null right here. So we're using the compute render component to specify what index the movie is playing at. And that way we can kind of generate things frame by frame and start to stitch them together into your final output. The one thing that you want to make sure to do is look at the frame rate of your original video. If you scroll down here, I've already pulled that out. So if you take a look here, you'll see that my video that I'm using is 30 frames a second. To get this to work correctly, make sure that your FPS in Touch Designer right here is set to the same number. This will just make it a lot easier when you're trying to map your keyframes. Next, what you'll want to do is go ahead and go to this constant. And if it's not already set to zero, you go ahead and zero out the movie index. And you can basically just hit record and it'll start processing everything frame by frame. The other thing that you can do is swap out the different prompts that you're going to use. And the other thing that I'm keyframing at the moment is the strength for the image to image. 
So one thing to note is that if you want to change those keyframes, I have the animation component right here. You can hit edit. And you'll see here that I've changed specific keyframes for the prompt and the strength. And the prompt here is going to correspond to the index of this table. One other thing to note before we build this part of the network from scratch is that you can actually tack in another compute render component if you want. So you would hook it up here to the switch. You would also hook it up to the logic. Um, I would recommend definitely duplicate the second one because all of the references, all the binds for the parameters are referencing this first one. So you'll just change any, any custom settings that you want on this one and it'll automatically update here. And then you would need to add in the number of image generators here. Um, one thing to note, though, is that you might run into a rate limit on the API. So there's a max number of images that you can generate per second. If you do have your iterations up relatively high then and your strength relatively high as well, then you may not run into this. Um, but this allows you to just generate more frames every second. So it depends. There's trade-offs. If you have low iterations and low strength, then you'll be generating them quite fast, and you might run into the rate limit for the API. Just wanted to make sure that you know that that, that is a possibility to increase the total number. I'm going to go back for now just to keep it at 2. One other thing that I wanted to mention really quickly is that the stable diffusion model, when it's on image to image mode, actually has a max resolution of 768 by 768. The model that's being used right now was trained on images that, in general, that were 512 by 512. So you're probably going to get the best resolution if you stick to something around that size. But one thing that you'll notice is that the model will automatically scale the resolution to a power of 2. So my input video is actually 1280 by 1920. In order to keep a fairly similar ratio, what I ended up doing was scaling it to a width of 512 by 786. So what I would recommend doing on your end is most likely keeping things around 512 by 512. Um, but in this case, I tested both, and I felt like the visuals actually looked good doing both resolutions. So I ended up sticking with this uh, more vertical resolution. Let's go ahead and dive in and start making our own uh, animation component up here. OK, so the main thing that we want to do is we want to be able to keyframe in certain parts of our video so that at a certain point in time, I want to change the strength. And I also want to be able to change the prompts that I'm using for my video. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put down the animation component from Touch Designer. So we'll take this frame, and this frame is going to determine the playback of the animation. And one thing that you'll want to do as well is this range by default. It's normally mapped to the timeline, but we'll just do a custom one. And you're going to want to set this to be the duration of your video if you have audio mapped to it as well. So we can get a sense for that. If, if we scroll down here, we can see that the total length of our video is going to be 476 frames in total. And so that could be our max. So maybe we'll do that. It'll be 476. Hey, Torn from the future here. One really quick thing that you need to do is make sure that to take your animation component and in the animation tab, change it from locked to timeline to use input index. If you're playing your animation by default, you'll notice how it's just playing back links to our timeline. And we want to do is instead use this input frame, which is corresponding to the specific frame we're about to render in Compute Render. OK, back to the video. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and edit our animation. So you'll notice here that this is the location where we can put in the name for the channel that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and make one for prompt. I'm going to add that channel in, and let's go ahead and do another one for our strength. I'll add that channel in. And for our strength, let's go ahead and scrub along our timeline for a second to figure out where we want to do our first transition. So I'm going to turn this audio movie device on, and that way when I'm playing on the timeline, you'll I'll actually hear the audio. And you can control the volume right here. 
So I know there's a snare drum at the very beginning. Uh, there's like a little fade in. Maybe let's go on the kick. So I know I know this song goes do 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 do, and then there's a kick that happens. And so I know that that happens at around 41. So what I'm gonna do is why don't we change our strength so that our strength increases and kind of hits like a maximum threshold at 41. Make sure that you're selected over here on strength and we're gonna right click on this line, add a keyframe. You can kind of drag these around wherever and you'll notice that this value right here, this corresponds to our timeline and then this is the value. So here, this is gonna be 41 and our value for our strength should probably be around, maybe let's, let's have our strength go to around like 0.5 Maybe a bit later on, it'll kind of dip down a little bit. So I'll add another keyframe so that it goes it goes down in general. And then let's figure out a time to change our prompt. How about at a similar point in time to our strength change? So we know at around frame 41, we're gonna change, we're gonna ramp our strength up. Uh, I also want our strength to actually be not at a default of zero. So let's let's go ahead and take this initial starting value and uh, we're gonna lift this up to be around like maybe 0.4 by default. And same with the end point. I, I want the strength, because if our strength is all the way at zero, it's actually gonna generate an image that's identical to our original input image. So let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm gonna make sure that our end point is around how about point 0.4 and I'm going to kind of flatten out this curve here okay let's go ahead and set up our prompt to change similarly at our frame 41 I'm going to click on our prompt and let's go ahead and right click and add in a keyframe so at frame 41, our value is going to be 1. And same thing for after. We want to make sure that our end frame all the way over here is also going to be 1. So it should be a flat line right here. Okay, that's great. And what you'll notice is that on the output of our animation, you'll see that there are these two chop values that are here. And this is great. So as our animation plays through, as this frame number right here starts to increment, it will start to change these values for us. I'm gonna place a null. And we can already just get a reference to our strength and we can pass that into our component. So I'll put this in an active mode, hover over compute render and pass this onto our strength as a reference. Now the other component is bound to the other component right here, so it's going to automatically pick up that same value. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually get our prompt. So I'm going to select out just our prompt. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to use this value right here for selecting a specific row in a table. So let's go ahead and make a table. And this table is gonna to correspond to our different prompts. So let's create a couple different variations for it. The first one I had was like solar system stars, swirling vortex, some things like that. And then next we can add another row. This was like iris, pupil, eye, planet. Okay, so what we want to be able to do is select one of these rows depending on our animation. So I'll place a select down. And what we want to do is change this by index and match these. So we're getting the same start and end. So I'm going to take this number right here. And if you hit the plus button, we're gonna drag a reference to this end and pass a reference there. So now these are linked together. And that way now when I change this to zero, we get index zero and at one, it goes to index one. Okay, so now what we wanna do is basically pass our 
prompt and use our prompt from our animation to select our index. So if we pass this right now and use this as our index, you'll notice that even though the value right now is at 0.591, it already jumped to the second index. And that's because it's rounding up. So that's not really good because we just wanted to keyframe it so that the second that we hit frame 41, that's when it transitioned, right? If we're, if we're animating this based off our audio reactivity, we wanna make sure that it's like on the dot transitioning. And so what we can do here is instead of just getting this prompt, we actually need to take the floor of it. And what that will do is it, it will round down. It'll basically chop off the decimal. So we can type in math.floor and now we'll get zero up until frame 41. And then once it's at frame 41, it'll set our prompt to index one. All right, so to test out this index, what we can do is actually just pop over to our movie index constant right here, and we can change that value. So we can see anywhere from zero to 40, we're still getting the correct index. And then the second that we hit 41, now we're on index one. Perfect, this is great. Let's go ahead and put down a null. And then we're gonna pass a reference to this prompt. In order to get that index, what we'll do here is we'll get operator null eight. And then we'll get row zero, column zero. And we'll make sure that this is set up as a reference. There we go. All right, so hopefully this gives you a sense of how you can start to keyframe in different parameters. You can add in different prompts, strengths, and you can kind of go wild with this. You could actually use this similarly to add in a keyframe for your negative prompts, as well as your seed value, your iterations, guidance, all of those different pieces. We haven't actually looked at the negative prompts yet. And those allow you to specify a prompt that you don't want the stable diffusion model to generate. So one option here is you could put in something like dark if you want to brighten up the output. Or if your output is looking really grainy, you could put in grainy as a negative prompt to try and dampen the amount of graininess that you're getting in your video. One other thing to note is that I set this up so that once you hit record, it will go through and record all of your new input frames. And then the other thing it will do is it'll automatically stop the recording once it's played the video all the way through. So just make sure when you go to start your recording, go in here, set your index to zero, and then go ahead and hit record. And that should do the trick. All right, well, I hope this gives you some interesting ideas for things that you can generate using this. I'm really, really excited to see what you'll create using this component. Keep me posted. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this type of content, consider it giving me like and subscribe. If you'd like to support me, the best way to do that is through my Patreon. Um, I really, really appreciate the support that I've gotten so far. Uh, it's been really exciting to just see and and hear a lot of the feedback from everyone in that community as well so that means a lot thanks again i look forward to seeing you in the next one